Now I put on my official hat. e Books welcomes all of you once again. Thank you for making time on Saturday and the children. I'm very, very proud to publish Irene's book. Why? Of course, because it's meaningful. More importantly, I too am a mother, and my Irene am now a grandmother to two little kids. So the sense of significance in passing on values that we ourselves were taught and values that we would very much want the younger ones to invite eventually. And meanwhile, I like to think that our children have already gotten them. Either they caught it from our behaviour, our speech, our unspoken mannerisms, or they read it through what we wrote, what we talk about day to day. I'd like to acknowledge Colin who has just come with a daughter, Leslie. Colin is the illustrator of Iron's first edition. Please, Colin, come in front. Leslie, come in front. Come in front. Sit, sit in front, please. We would like to engage you in a conversation afterwards. So, in doing this book, when I read, let her tell you afterwards why she came to me, I don't know why. But I got a call from her that she's coming uh, to approach us to do this book. I was thrilled, literally thrilled. Such an honor, I thought. But being poor independent publishers, we said, I mean, I can't afford to do the full color book that you and Colin did the first round. Will you settle for second best? So we are doing it in black and white. But I'm giving you something extra. Irene's own sketches of her family members in the book. She did this over a period of time. And I think also she did look very well, as some of you have noticed. So after Irene speaks, I let her talk whatever she wants to say rather long. But not more than not more than 10 minutes. <laughs> so that we have time to interact. You can ask questions and you can have a little reflection after that and have more time to interact with our family and friends. Thank you, Leslie. Thank you. Hi. I'm really touched to see so many of my friends and my supporters. Thank you. And uh, most of a lot of you have, have uh, impacted me a lot throughout my life. Some of you have prayed for me. Um, a lot of you have just stood by me, done so many things for me. Thank you. Today I'm just not going to give you a speech because I'd like to spend some time with you like us, my daughter and I, my friend, some questions later on. Okay? I'll just read to you a few snippets from the book. You know, this book covers a variety of subjects and a lot to do with relationship with her. Okay, so here it goes. This was 18 July 1992. Dear Min, I think it's time we talk about this freedom you want. Hmm. Your friends can stay out late until 3 in the morning and their parents don't seem to mind and you want me to let you, you, want me to let you do the same? Tell me it's much better now that let me stay up till midnight. But you think it's still too early because you have to leave the group just when the party is beginning. I know that at 17 you can look after yourself. But there are reasons why your father and I would like you home before 12. It's not that we don't trust you, but there are many factors over which you have no control etc, etc, etc. You are escorted home safely each time, but your escort has to go home too. Think of your safety. Okay, that's one. Another one is... 
Be true to yourself. Yum me. Exam time. Remember the time you asked me if you would go to, to a party when your exams are just around the corner? I said no. But you kept on bugging me. When I insisted you don't go and you did not give you the choice, you reluctantly obeyed. I believe you really knew you shouldn't go right, but because all your friends were going, you felt you would be missing out. After that, you were glad, weren't you? And you obeyed me. You know the right thing to do, and my saying so no, my saying no, affirm your inner voice. That's the privilege of being a child. You can depend on your parents to stop you from doing the wrong thing. The next one was written in January 1994. Parents are people too. I hear so many stories of young people complaining about their parents. Often these complaints are actually justified. Why do parents behave like that? Preceding this, there was a paragraph about a father who snooks around his daughter's room when she's out, reads her diary. And the father who, who smacks his daughter who comes home late. But those stories make me mad. But why do parents behave like that? I think many parents are actually confused as to what to do with their children. They want to protect them and they don't want their children to get into bad company. But the way which such good intentions are communicated to their children evokes exactly the opposite effect from young people. Children see it as encroaching on their privacy and a lack of understanding on their parents' part. You should know by now, me, that parents are not perfect. They are products of the way their parents brought them up and they may, may be repeating the same mistake their parents made. Probably, they probably also think that their way is the way to control their children. Don't forget, me that parents are often very tired people, desperately trying to juggle earning a living and all the other things. Alright, next one. This one has, is accompanied by a beautiful picture of the right, Mr. Right and Miss Right. <laughs> we can ask, him, ask them questions later on. Mr. Right. Dear me, who should you marry? Hmm. Ever, ever since you were a small girl, I've prayed that God would lead you to the person He wants you to marry. Just as I prayed for my own life partner, and your father showed up. I say life partner because I believe and want you too to believe that marriage is meant to last a lifetime. So here you are. There's a typo error in the first line actually. <laughs> 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 we forgot. This one is cute. Dear May, January 1995. It's called Umbrellas and Stones in the Pocket. What on earth are these? Umbrellas and Stones in the Pocket. When I was young, my mother used to tell us, when you go out, carry an umbrella. In sunshine or rain, it could be very helpful. More importantly, you could use it as a weapon. <laughs> Another option was to carry a stick, just in case you met anyone who tries to be funny. By that she meant someone actually not so funny, an attacker. It was also useful to hit dogs, sorry dog lovers, <laughs> who which ran out of their houses to chase and bite passers-by. In those days, our dogs always chased by cyclists outside the house and bit people. My mother had four daughters, so we were well prepared for such an, event an eventuality. Hit the man with the umbrella, poke his eyes. I hope the small children don't listen to this. <laughs> and we'll hike it. And we know where la. Where the leaders. We never had the occasion to use the tactics we learned. But it was certain we were alert to suspicious characters. 
That is, if they look like bad men. I suppose like those in cowboy movies. But the one I remember, I remember, defied all usual categorization. He was brown, oily, and stark naked. My sister and I, uh, my sister and I saw him as we walked home from church. He walked calmly, quietly, and confidently down to the other side of the road. We ran all the way home. When we turned around to see if he was following us, he smiled. Same in the house, we peeped at him from behind the windows. You remember the oily man from the 1950s? Okay, next one, almost the end, who's running your life? You complain that I'm running your life and always telling you what to do. You are right. Actually, I've been doing that all along, but you didn't seem to mind until now. How come? It's probably because we are both very busy nowadays. We have hardly any time to talk. And when I get to talk to you, I offload all the accumulated things I have to tell you. Overload, that's what it is. Nowadays, we enjoy making all kinds of independent plans to do this and that, go here, go there. That when I actually intervene, you feel as if I'm running your life. I'm glad you're very independent now. You release me of deciding for you the details of your life. I do feel I have more time to do my own things these days. In the first uh, book, it was, uh, I forgot, terrible. A new story called Grandmother Fu Lu Ying. Those of you who know, who know, knew her, she was a real special woman. Just a snippet of that. And here is a lovely picture of my mother in law and carrying my husband and he was a baby. Okay? And she told me this. Don't bargain. Let me earn the money. Ama said to me one day when we were discussing how much to pay the carpenter. In the 35 years I had known her as a daughter-in-law, there are so many good qualities she displayed in her daily interactions with people I have come to admire her. She modeled for me in many ways how to be a good person. And she came from China. Ama came to Singapore from Inchun, Fujian, China when she was 18. After her arranged marriage to Akong, they brought with her Akong's mother, the great-grandmother. Great-grandmother will have our feet which immobilized her, so Amma had full responsibility of keeping house, minding children, and looking after the older lady. And just a little bit more here, isn't that? Did you notice that Amma's feet were now and before? It was difficult for her to buy comfortable shoes. She told me that as a child, her feet were bound, but she objected and removed the bandages and so escaped from this bondage. Girls in China in those days were not sent to school, but she wanted to learn, so she ran out of the house to attend classes and thus completed primary school education. These were her early demonstrations of her indomitable spirit. So I'll conclude just a little bit now. And hello to all those who I didn't meet earlier on. Now, uh, if you would like to comment, Ask questions, say anything you like about your own children. This is the time. Uh, I'd just like to uh, add that there are two other features in this book that is new. One, at the end of each letter, there is a little section called Think About. I already added this to prompt the reader. Just think about issues related to that particular letter. 
And the next thing is, there's a preface by me. Her voice comes out in this book. So even if you're the first edition, it's worthwhile. Of course, it's the publishers. But really, I think Irene mean, has given us quite a gem. To those of us who are parents, it helps us to phrase so appropriately what we would so much have to say to our kids. And yet, so diplomatically, that they should not be offended. So, is there anyone? I really want to congratulate you. I read your first book too many years ago, I forget how many years. Um, it did make an impact. I don't have a daughter. I've always wanted a daughter. I have two sons. I have a question, but before I say that, I do want you to know that that book that I read was so touching. I met a lady friend in America at one of my trips or conferences, and she was having daughter-mother relationship problems. She's an ex-director of Disneyland. And I shipped her. I promised her that when I get back, I'm going to ship you my copy of this book. So I remember shipping this out and she gave me an email and said that it also impacted her life. So I think that this has got profound value for those who treasure that mother-daughter bond. My question to you is this. Um, I know you're a Christian. Um, I want to. One of the really big challenges is having our children love Jesus the way we do. How have you as a mother um, found challenges in that area and how have you managed to have them be first children of the Lord as opposed to grandchildren of the Lord inherited Christianity with us? I love it. I pray a lot. And I pray desperately. That's the answer. Yeah, and as when they get older, I pray even more. You know, there's one, one thing that I, I, um, I, I even wake them up to go to church. And they get so irritated. And I'll say, if you had an appointment with Lee Kuan Yu, you would be on time. <laughs> and of course, they say, you spoil my day. If only you didn't start the day like that. I said, too bad, I'm your mother. This is my job. <laughs> I think you asked a very real question. And many of mamas in this room are believers and do wish that the reality of Jesus in our lives can be experienced by our children. But because many of us are, I call us uh, the Christians who struggle to be one. The children had it inherited from a silver spoon. So it's a very, very different journey for them. So we appreciate their difficulties in coming to the kind of faith that literally moves mountains. I moved 20 tons of books and materials, maybe this few weeks, by prayer and supplication. Not of just myself, but of course, prayer group and family members. So to move the hearts of our children and our children is even tougher. And then we pass our books. So it's a good question, and there's a, I think it's a very real answer. Uh, yes. Okay, if no question, for me, it's this. Let me introduce Bob. Let, let me introduce Bob. Bob okay. is a very, very important person in our life. And I needed him desperately when I broke my leg, broke my hip uh, in July last year. I think I, you look really about me today, I just told my Thank mind. you, Bob. <laughs> and uh, uh, I think uh, we actually also benefit from you. We did discuss some of our problems with you like earlier on. But now, you are a grandfather now, I do think there's a major issue. But of course, I was very important. So this may be a problem. I want to ask the people here, this is very, very important, that, that uh, with the digital information coming so fast, uh, people were saying that in the next 10 
And even if uh, the information coming with a small children, you know, the skeletal development might be much faster than they can cope with. So, as a mother, how do you advise a daughter with a lot of information coming, how to cope with this, apart from prayer? <laughs> It's a difficult question. I don't think I have an answer. The only thing about the digital equipment that, that I'm concerned about is the radiation that they are supposed to do. Uh, the, I suppose in every age there is a, there's also an onslaught of information. And I, in my book, I address, uh, I, I address this issue as not all experiences are meaningful. So we have to teach our children. Um, we have to start from our base camp, what we teach in the home. And then when they know that what they have in the home is good and solid, then they, can be able, they are able to filter out all the nonsense that's outside. But they will venture out and try a little bit. And of course, we hope that they don't come to uh, something, they don't have to experience something that they have seen that might spoil their life. That's a, always our fear. So we, we just hope and pray and do what we can, I suppose. I don't know if that, please somebody else give a better answer than that. Okay, uh, yeah, I mean, we are not in a position to give the best answers. <laughs> just our own position. Let's go on a second, sorry. Uh, I, I was just informed that Mr. John White Singh, the publisher of 10 Pacific Publications, who first published the original edition is here. For me, he's thanking. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chang. Thank you. You brought a lovely, lovely book. Yeah? I think so many of us have benefited from it. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Um, can you see some similarity between me and I? Well, I'm the eldest sister. And uh, congratulations, I mean, I'm very proud of you, very proud of you. And, um, yeah. and you see my brother? That's what my mother taught us, okay? We were four girls and one boy. And this boy was always running around, we would never find him to help us, to protect us. So what do we do? We have my brother. And I'm still doing it today, but not so much for protection, because I got my husband to do that. Pigmentation. <laughs> yes, I can identify, you know, the growing up times, you know, I grew up today. We are a very, very close to family. And my mother was uh, a Christian when she came to Singapore. And of course, she didn't have time. She didn't really have time. You know? It was a struggle to bring all of us up. My, both my parents worked very, very hard to, to bring us up. But, um, you know, and uh, she was often sick. She was often not to her. She didn't really look after herself. She looked after us, but she didn't look after herself. And um, she always, you know, says, I say, why do you do something like this? And then she would say in, in Teochew, Muila, we have Jesus, Muila. And I was so worried for her, but she was really steadfast in her faith, even up to the last minute. And uh, in, in hospital, I think my sister told me, that um, she even, you know, she called out for Jesus. I think hours before she died, and she she comes from Hong Kong, so she speaks Cantonese. Ping on, ping on, she shouted to Jesus that it was a life well lived, and because she had planted that little seed in us, and um, you know, God has nurtured the seed. Almost all are Christians. Praise God. Thank you. It's like a jet, just like a like I let you in a secret. We are such a lean little outfit because I depend on 
help from various ones to prove it. So my eldest sister Monica, she wanted to come, but somehow she can't make it. She's the one who helped prove the book, and she loved it. And she said it was a great book, and I must come for the launch. But I all good eldest sisters are so busy taking care of so many things, and that's why she's not here. I hope she comes and join us later. Is anyone else? Before I do that, I want to acknowledge some very important people who started me on writing. I wouldn't have started even. And my editor, Christine Paul. to the predecessor of the current life section and I had to handle all the pages with the acronym F before you think something else it's actually family yeah? it's food and all and fitness and I of course it had to fill like 20 pages a week which was a lot of pages to fill yeah Santia will testify to that he was the overall editor and uh, Irene was one of my best freelancers because she was a very steady worker. When she was assigned very difficult columns, for example, demystifying what hospitals did. And it was the days where hospitals were transforming and evolving. She had to go to find out different departments in hospitals and what they were doing, what was the value add in those days. I was totally confident that she could do it. She had a left brain because she was science trained as a dental surgeon. And she had a very, very creative right brain. You know, and through that right brain, we could communicate a lot. And all her difficult scientific columns were very, uh, were wrapped in right brain accessibility so that a man in the street could understand. In those days, Sunny will recall, the suicide leadership, the majority were three O levels and we know. Of course, the readership has gone up now, we all have tertiary education. But in those days, you know, we had to struggle. People who wanted value add, which is all that the hospitals were doing, and people who were only three O levels. So I congratulate Irene. I found her a superwoman. She was handling everything. From, um, from words to mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I got to know Katie as well. Anyway, my life has been very much enriched by knowing her, and I'm sure all of you will agree with me. I mean, I do not know Katie well, because I uh, only know him as a kind husband who will rush uh, sketches to my office from their home when we have last minute changes or um, inappropriate scanning, we need to redo, you know, happen to my daughter in law's house to pass them to me. So, KK, may I ask you, what do you feel about all these messages in there? Do you identify with them? Now, anything else you want to say? I don't think I have very much to say. It's all said in the book because uh, that's how we will bring it up bring up our daughters and our sons love. So the information there is very important for every family, not just us. Because uh, being parents, uh, we do discuss a lot about how to bring up our children. It's all contained now in this book, which is available for everyone. Thank you very much. <laughs> Save more time for the interaction mingling. Hey. 